Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. I hope you can see everything okay with the sun. I've got the sun looking at me right through the trees right now. Today I'm going to be reviewing for you all the Bogue RV CR55. And this is a dual compartment cooler that not only allows you to have a refrigerator side and a freezer side, but allows you to decide whether you want to turn the whole thing into a freezer or turn the whole thing into a refrigerator or which compartment you want to be the freezer or refrigerator it's pretty cool that you can do all of these things with this little cooler right here its capacity is 59 quarts now you all know that i like simplicity right and simplicity means easy to use i like buttons this actually comes with an app that you can control it with an app and for those of you that have been following me for a while, you know that I don't like apps. I like to be able to control everything manually on the machine itself. And I don't like to have to rely on an app in order to be able to control anything. So I like that it's simple. I like that you can control it manually. But for those of you that are techies that like apps, you can go for it. Use the app and you'll be able to, you know, do pretty much everything that you can do manually with an app. But this comes with a pretty good owner's manual. And of course, it comes with a charging block and it comes with a charging wire that hooks up to 12 volt. Now, this unit also accepts a 300 watt hour battery that you can purchase as a bundle or purchase separately. Now, Rogue RV forgot to send me that battery. It's on its way, but I really wanted to review this now because it's getting to be that time of the year where people are getting ready to go out on trips and such. And if this is a good machine, I would really like you to know whether it is or not. In my opinion, of course, after the review. That way you can go take a look at it if you like to or not. Now, before I forget, I will be leaving the link to this machine right here for Rogue RV and their site on a pinned comment and the description of the video, right? And if they provide me with any discount codes to pass on to you, I will leave it there as well. So far, I'm pretty impressed with the with the construction of it. I really like a function that this door has, and I'm going to show you that there in a second. But this is a pretty nice heavy-duty latch that it brings. See that? And it lifts up very easily and if you want to drop it from about three or four inches high it clicks right in or you can just bring it and click it very easy operation and it stays on pretty well the inside of it oh and look at this it comes with a cutting board is that cool or what <laughs> uh, let me know if you have a cooler that's similar to this that comes with a cutting board but look at the inside this is a very deep cooler here. Now, this is the one that I believe comes programmed, this side right here, to be the refrigerator. And then you have a smaller side here, which is programmed to be the freezer. And the reason that this side here for the freezer part is not as deep as the refrigerator part is because under it is where the compressor and all of the things that make this into an actual refrigerator are. Okay, and you can see that in the bottom there, there is a plug that you can take off to let any water drain out. This right here looks like it might be lights. I don't know that. I didn't see that when I was looking through the user's manual, but this looks like it might be some LCD lights. We'll find out if that's what it is later on. It's got one on this side as well. And to not disappoint, ladies and gentlemen, Rogue RV made sure to put a bottle opener on one of the sides it looks like it's a stainless steel bottle opener and the wheels ladies and gentlemen at first they look cheap but they are not it's actually a hard plastic wheel a rim but it's got a nice rubber tread on the top so it's not one of those wheels that's all hard plastic that tears apart easily it's a pretty good wheel as far as being able to drag it as you can see here through gravel and such now this here is the part where you would put the battery that is available for this model however like i said i don't have it yet it is on its way and maybe after i receive it i'll go ahead and do a follow-up video to show you how well the battery works but if you don't have a battery you can always charge it through this port here it's got a solar port and it also has the 12 or 24 volt port as well that you hook up to either your car or to a solar generator which is what i'm going to be doing today 
or to an actual AC outlet in your home. You know, I've never owned one of these machines before, but everything that I'm seeing, I really like it. And I can actually see this being used like in a small cabin or in an RV or something like that as the main use for keeping your things cool. Another thing that I think this would be a great asset for in the preparedness realm is for those people that are on medications that need to keep them cool. This you can actually set to the temperature that you want it to be at and it will stay at that temperature as long as it has energy provided to it. And I really like the quality of all of the little things here. Like this handle seems like it's a very sturdy handle. And let me show you the other end. It has an actual bar that if you do not extend it out, you can hold the bar from this end like this and hold the handle on the other end and lift it up as one whole unit unless you want to go ahead and pull it by the wheels. And to extend the bar out is very simple. All you have to do is go ahead and click on this small lever right here that's on each side of the bar and it will extend out. And then all you have to do is extend it out and then pull your refrigerator wherever you want to bring it. Now take a look at this lid. I really like it. See how it comes up nice and easy. But what I really like about it is, is that you can turn this lid around very easily. No screws or nothing. All you have to do is pull up this side. And there you go. Comes right off. It's got a little, I don't know what to call this thing. little button, whatever it is on each side. And uh, to put it on the other side, all you do is you put it in here in this little hole first. If you can find it, that is. And then slide it in the other one. And it closes just as good. I really like that. I know it's something that's very simple, but I really like how that works. Okay, I hope that you can see everything okay. You can see that our Bogue RV solar generator is on, and I went ahead and activated both the DC and the AC function on it so that we can get right to it. So the first one that we're going to try is we're going to go ahead and just turn this on right on whatever setting it is from the factory we're going to turn it on and we're going to see how much wattage it pulls off of ac and we're going to see how much wattage it pulls off of dc all right so let's go ahead and start off with our ac we're going to go ahead and plug it in to the unit and this is a dummy proof plug-in that you put in there it only goes in one way and i like that about equipment i like it when it's dummy proof because i am a dummy so we're going to go ahead and plug it in here and we'll see at what wattage it starts using it well first we have to turn it on it would that would help all right so i just turned it on and we can see our wattage down here i'm really hoping that you can see it Right now it's at 51, okay, 43. It's bouncing around a little bit, but we'll let it stabilize here for maybe 30 seconds or so. And I'm not sure if you can hear the compressor is on right now, and it's somewhat of a little burring noise, but it's not really loud. I think that the birds chirping out here probably make more noise than this compressor, to tell you the truth. So we can see here that it's stabilized at, a, at about 45 watts. So let's call it 45 watts or 44 watts. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the machine now. And you can see here that consuming DC power, it's consuming, I would say on average, about 32, 33 watts. You can see it's jumping up and down a little bit, but it'll find its equilibrium. Well, I would say on average about 32 watts. So that's about 12 watts or so on average less than doing it with your AC outlet. And why is that, ladies and gentlemen? It's because when this block right here, when this block converts your power to AC power, it uses energy. 10 or 12 watt hours difference uh, may not sound like a lot, but when you span that out over several hours or a day, 24 hours or so, it really does add up. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the functionality of this unit. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Let me show you what the actual control panel can do with it. And let's see if we can freeze some water for goodness sakes because it's getting hot out here. It's a whopping 64 degrees, ladies and gentlemen. So we need to get that ice going in a hurry. 
I just recorded a few minutes of this without recording, so we're doing it over again. So I already had this on and cooling a little bit, but I turned it off, we'll do it over again. So to turn it on, here we go, it's on, and I hope you can see the temperatures on there. You can see that one of the temps on here is 38 degrees, is because I already had this running. So that's on the refrigerator side, and uh, this is on the freezer side, or really, either or you can switch these around to have it be all refrigerator or all freezer or vice versa very very nice feature on this so in order to go ahead and turn the temperature down it's very easy it comes as a default that your left side is the one that you can turn up and down uh, as soon as you turn it on so here in order to turn the temperature up we would just go ahead and press the plus button to turn it down now this is the side that I plan on using as the refrigerator side so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it all the way down to I like about 37 degrees Fahrenheit now in order to turn the function of being able to bring the temperature up or down to the freezer side or to the right side it's very simple ladies and gentlemen all you have to do is press the minus and then press this side and now you can go up or down on this side see that and it's not a long press or nothing. It's just a quick press. So we're going to bring this one all the way down to negative four, which is the lowest that it will go. So you can turn this entire machine into a freezer or a refrigerator or have whichever side you want to be a freezer or refrigerator. I'm going to go ahead and put a thermometer in there on each side. And I'm going to go get a bottle of water for each side to see if it actually achieves the temperature that it's supposed to. So here you can see the two thermometers that I put in here. This is my freezer thermometer right there. And then this one right here is just one of your automatic ones that you have a wire to it. And the probe is down yonder. And I'm just going to go ahead and close the door and keep this out. You can see that this one's already dropping a little bit. Let's go ahead and close this lid. And even though that little wire is sticking out, it still has a very good seal. It's like I said, the gasket that they put in here in this lid is very good quality. And uh, we can see here that it's back down to 40 degrees on the refrigerator side. And ladies and gentlemen, take a look. 35 watts, 32 watts, 27 watts. I would say that is averaging 30 or less watts on average. And this is while it's running. Okay, so you can see that this... Bogue RV solar generator is at 98% right now and that we are still running off of DC power. So let's go ahead and see how long it takes for our freezer side to get to freezing. And let me go grab a bottle of water for each side so that we can put it in there and see how long it takes to freeze the water and see if it will maintain temperature on the refrigerator side. All right, I couldn't find any bottles of water. We don't really buy bottled water, but I did find a couple of these popsicles here that we had hanging around for the last, I don't know, five years or so. So we're going to go ahead and put one in the refrigerator side and then one in the freezer side. And now that I look at this, ladies and gentlemen, now that I look at this, I forgot to mention something. It just reminded me because I saw this option here, and it's this right here, is that this has a max or eco mode where you use a lot less electricity so right now it's on the max side of things and it's only pulling about 24 or so watts it, it averages between 24 and 30 watts that is pulling but if you hit the little gear here and you press it and just leave it pressed it's going to give you an option on whether you want to change it from low to medium to high okay and then if you want to change the max to eco you see where it says eco now it's on eco high and now it's back on max we're going to go ahead and change it to eco we're going to leave it on eco and now if we want to change it from eco high all we have to do is press the little gear again and keep it pressed in and you'll see that the high changes and you can change it to low, to medium, or to high. And if you want to leave it on eco high, you just don't press the button again. This is a pretty cool 
little feature. So as you can see there, it's currently pulling about 22, between 22 and 28 watts, I would say, uh, on average. And right now it is 9.29 a.m. local time. So we're going to go ahead and run this thing at least for the next, I would say, 10 to 12 hours, depending on how sleepy I get tonight, and see how it does as far as how much energy it drains off of the Rogue RV solar generator, and if it passes the test as far as keeping temperature and making sure that the freezer works the way it's supposed to work. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been about 45 minutes. I'm on my way to the bunker, so I figured I'd stop by. 45 minutes, our refrigerator side is at 38 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's take a look inside in our freezer side. Our freezer side, oh, look at that, our freezer is already at negative four. See that? Uh, the popsicle there hasn't frozen yet because it's only been like 45 minutes. It's nice and cold, but you can see that our freezer is negative four. Not bad. And there's our popsicle down there on our refrigerator side. And here's the little LED lights. I think that's pretty cool. All right, so we'll be back here in a little bit. Let's see what the uh, Rogue RV solar generator is at. It's at 96% power. And you can see that it is drawing 21, 23. I just went up a little more probably because I opened the lid. But it looks like it's averaging about 23 or so watts. So far, I'm pretty impressed with this little setup. One thing that I just noticed as I was walking up here is that this is a black cooler and the sun is beating right down on it. So let's take a look and see what the temperature of the outside of the cooler is. I've got this little gadget here that uh, tells you what the surface temperature is. So let's go ahead and press it here. So the surface temperature of that part of the cooler is 95, almost 96 degrees. Let's see what the side is. 91 degrees. And it's definitely a lot hotter than what it actually is out here. It's only about 65, 67 degrees outside ambient temperature. And you can see that the surface of the cooler, since it is dark, is sucking up a lot of that sun. So right now at about 1230 in the PM, it's about three hours after we started this machine, we are down to 91% on the Rogue RV solar generator, uh, which is roughly about, I would say between 80 or so and 90 watt hours, because this is a 1000 watt hour solar generator. So not too bad as far as how much power it's consumed in the last three or so hours, being that this dark surface color has been soaking up all of that sun. The refrigerator side shows that it's at 34 degrees, but we do have it set at 37. So maybe it's because the compressor is running right now, cooling it up. And let's take a look and see what our freezer side is doing. Our freezer right now is at zero degrees. And let's take a look at our popsicle. Oh, excuse me. And our popsicle is not frozen solid, but it's definitely slushed over. Our cooler side, as you can see down there, that popsicle is not frozen at all. And it seems to be doing pretty well, keeping temperature. It is now 2.30 in the afternoon. So we've had this running for about five hours. I want you to take a look at this. We're at 87% and you can see that the output is zero. And that is because ladies and gentlemen, once the machine reaches temperature, it doesn't have to run. So the better insulated that this is, meaning that if you put something over this, like I said before, some type of an insulation, like a wool blanket or something like that, and the more out of the sun that you keep it, the longer that your battery will last, be it the battery that you can actually get with this or be it a solar generator that you hook it up to. I forgot to check the popsicle. There's our temperature. You see our temperature is well below zero. And our popsicle is now frozen. Check it out. Okay, and our popsicle that's in the fridge, it's nice and chilly, but it's not frozen. So it's working as it's supposed to work. And let's see if opening it up started it up. I thought I heard something starting up. So just opening it up, it recognized that the temperature went up a little bit, so it started the compressor. 
So I had planned on coming back to check this at about 7.30, maybe 9.30 at the latest in the evening. If you all remember, we started running this at, I believe it was 9.30 in the morning. Yes, 9.30 in the morning. And I fell asleep, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and it is now about 5 o'clock in the morning the next day. So we have been running this machine for about 20 hours, just shy of 24 hours. And uh, you're going to be pretty surprised to see what I just saw here a minute ago when I came out here and first checked it. I, I want to say that I am very impressed with this machine. I think this is a must-have for any person who's preparing for maybe a grid down situation where they want to be able to keep things cool and even frozen with very little use of energy, right? There's one thing that I've found about this machine that I would change, but only one thing. And, I th and it's not even that big of a deal. But let me first show you how much electricity it's used from the solar generator in a 20 hour period and then we'll talk about what I would change and I, I mean I'm already going to tell you that I highly recommend this machine. So the first thing I want to show you is, is that our freezer side is at negative seven but our refrigerator side that we had set I believe it was 37 yes we had the refrigerator side set at 37 and you can see that it's 24 degrees in there, which means that if we look in there, that popsicle should be frozen. And in my opinion, that's not really a good thing. Because if it says that you can set it at 38 degrees, which is a good temperature to set things at that you don't want to freeze but maintain fresh, then it should maintain it at 20, I mean 38 degrees, not 28. The uh, negative 7, where the lowest that it sets is negative 4, is okay because if you're going to have something set at negative 4 degrees, I don't think that negative 7 is going to damage it any. But something that you didn't want to freeze could be damaged if you set this at 38 degrees or 37 degrees and it goes down to below freezing so let's take a look inside and see what happened to that popsicle that we put in the refrigerator so this is the refrigerator side and we can see here that the popsicle is not frozen and that's great i think that the reason that we're seeing the uh temperature as high is because i have it right up against the wall and if you all remember right down here somewhere in this area on the bottom is close to the compressor but look at this look at the internal temperature of the uh, freezer side is showing that it's more than negative 10 below zero closer to negative 20 and this is the actual thermometer so i'm thinking that this is probably more correct than what it is that the machine is telling us because as you can see this popsicle is not frozen now this one here this is the popsicle that we took out of the freezer it's still frozen and it's worked great now look at how much energy it's used remember that we started this out i think it was at 99 percent but let's say it was 100 percent 27 percent that means that in 20 hours time we used roughly 270 watt hours so let's call it 300 watt hours in 20 hours time i think that is a great use of energy to have all of this space to be able to keep your things frozen or chilled what would i change about this i really really like this cooler i think it is awesome i really do the only thing that i would change on it is is that since there are two compartments one for refrigerator one for freezer or however you want to make it or mix it up since there are two compartments it'd be really nice if they can put two doors, if they can take this big door, split it in half, and have two latches, maybe one here and one here, so that each door you can open independently. That's the only thing that I would change about this machine. Other than that, I think it's a great machine. It's a great design, very user-friendly. I mean, I'm really excited about having this and about using it later on this summer when I want to keep stuff cool outside and not have to go into the house to get it. Or even as a backup in case I need to put things from the refrigerator 
inside of something because maybe my refrigerator took you know took a fall and it's not working anymore for whatever reason this is a great backup to have to keep those things but even better in my opinion to have for a grid down situation where you want to still be able to cool things but in a very economical way and you're not going to use a lot of electricity so again, I would like to thank Rogue RV for sending me this cooler to try the CR55. Remember, it's a 49 quart cooler, so it's got plenty of space. And the biggest thing about this is that it uses such little energy. I think this is a win-win for anyone that wants to have something for a grid down, either for long term or short term, or for someone that just wants to take it out camping and have something to keep their things cool in. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining in. I hope you got something out of this. And if I do get that battery later on, maybe I'll do a quick follow-up review just to let you, let you see how the battery works and how long it lasts. Other than that, have a great day. Thanks again for joining in. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place. And you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.